on in come on in i hope that you're all doing well wherever you're watching me from i just hope that it is all well with you all so first of all before i go into today's how to heart episode i just want to say a big thank you for the support that you showed me through the you know inboxes through um you know the messages that you know you've enjoyed the heart to heart sessions or the heart to heart i always keep i keep calling it session session video post whatever you want to call it thank you thank you for your support so this is a quick one um I just want to discuss something or just talk about something that is very like dear to me because God has really been ministering to me about and the title of today's uh, video is what's your heart saying so you want that job what's your heart saying so you want that marriage what's your heart saying you want to relocate what's your heart saying what's your motive behind it is it because God has sent you and God wants you to do it or is it because you want it because of your selfish desires and because of your pride so one of the things that for me God has really been ministering to me about is my heart and a lot of times we don't understand the importance of the heart the heart is basically the core of everything the same way for example uh, as the heart is 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 your in your physical body and let me just give a quick testimony so I remember around COVID times, I was really feeling, feeling very, very unwell. Um, I was very short of breath and I thought, I legit thought I had a blood clot because I'm a healthcare professional. So I'm just like, you know, you think the worst. And I went to see my GP, my GP said I was fine. So then when I went to a and &E, I was working actually that day. And then um, my supervisor just looked at me and said, Vanessa, you really do not look well. So um, you should get yourself checked into any because I was very short of breath. I wasn't able to function properly because I was very short of breath so when I went to A&E they did some tests and they eventually did a blood test and in your blood test you have a hemoglobin level your hemoglobin level basically your hemoglobin is a protein that carries the oxygen around your body so if your hemoglobin level is very low there isn't enough protein to carry the oxygen around your body to your heart which means that your heart then becomes at risk because your heart is is working twice as hard to try and compensate for the lack of oxygen and like it can be really dangerous because you can actually go into you can have a heart attack because then that's when your heart doesn't have enough supply of oxygen right so then i remember you know going in and they did a blood test and i went back to work i was on a night shift i went back to work and then next minute the head consultant of any &E comes to get me and she's like valentina you need to come with me so then i went with her and you know she was walking really fast but she could see that we was short of breath so she was walking really really slow and when she sat me down she said how have you been working how have you been functioning and i was like um, I'm okay she was like your HP is very low now HP measurements for a woman of my age should range according to UK measurement between 120 and 140 now when it goes down to oh I think 110 to 140 when it goes down to 80 it's pretty much like 98 is pretty much dangerous when it goes down to 70 people are usually comatose like really bad right guys my HP level was 41 okay 41 the doctor was like we need to get you admitted asap and you need to have a blood transfusion because your heart is at risk and i was just like so i literally went back to work and i told my team lead at the time who was working with me by the way shout out to you ben because you actually saved my life but you know he was like okay you just need to be off uh, sit down don't do anything right and so they um, called the consultant to examine me and stuff and the consultant came and she examined me and then she found that i went back to work because i was waiting to be admitted because i said that i was going to be admitted because i needed a blood transfusion that night and so i remember calling my mom and telling her that my mom was like oh my god oh my god oh my god you know my mom 100 percent african the most dramatic women in the world but we love them amen <laughs> and so my mom was panicking over the phone i was like mom i'm fine don't worry i mean i'm in good hands so you know come when when you can and so I remember I went back to work and I sat down and then uh, one of the consultant actually uh, the consultant that was under heard that I went and sat down and she literally came with three nurses one took my bag one took me and one took my coat and she led the way and I remember her saying sit down because your heart is at risk now and I remember when they were putting a cannula in my arm I said oh you know what I'm not really prepared can I actually go home 
to get a change of clothes and then come back and the doctor was like he was trying to be nice but really he was like I've never really seen somebody with a HP that low like walking and talking guys I was working I was doing everything I was working full-time I was studying full-time I was working on different projects I was doing all sorts of things but yet I was very unwell and so he was telling me like you know you could drop at any time so I would he said to me I wouldn't advise I wouldn't advise you to go home because you can drop at any time so then um, I was like, okay so then I stayed into a and I remember the lady saying your heart is at risk sit down and don't move and then uh, that just like made me realize wow our hearts are so important and when we don't feed it with the right things when we don't take the right things and when we don't take care we are at risk of having our heart stopping so the same way your heart is the most vital organ to your natural body your heart your soul is very vital to your spiritual well-being as well and so making sure that our heart is in the right condition is very very important and i really strongly believe that god makes us go through a process between the prophecy and the promise so the prophecy when the promise is being uh, you know given that something will happen in the future and the promise we go through a process of preparation and I really do believe that in that process God is not only strengthening our hands to be able to hold and handle what he has for us but he's also making sure that our hearts are in the right place now God is a jealous God God does not share his glory with anyone and a lot of times if if we've not allowed God to do enough hard work, if you don't take care, um, you can put the things that God blesses you with above him. And the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Our hearts are desperately wicked. The intents sometimes are not good. So that's why it's very important to ask God and let God work on our hearts. Now, what is your heart saying? What is your motive for you wanting to marry that guy that seems to be having 60k followers on Instagram is it that so when he gives shout outs to his wife you're there looking fine and you know he'd be like this is the love of my life and you know I wouldn't be here without her and bam here's your picture one of your finest pictures as well or do you want or do you want to marry the guy because you believe that God has put you together and you just want to marry him for him do you want to marry that person because of the idea of who you think they are as pertaining to who they really are marrying them for them why do you want to get that promotion at work is it because you really believe that you know you can push the you know the service forward or push that whatever project they're doing forward or just so that you know you can boast about being a manager being in charge and actually not doing any work what is your motive and so another little testimony I remember I grew up in church right and growing up in church we carry our own demons no no word of a lie you know a lot of times you think that ah oh, you're you're growing up in church you're safe no one of the things that I really had to deal with was the spirit of religion okay I was highly religious really thought that you know I'm gonna make it to heaven because my mom sang in the choir okay don't judge me all right I legit thought that was that was what's going to happen and I just thought yes I love the Lord you know do you love God yes I love the Lord with all my heart all my mind all my strength yeah I was reciting Bible but then I didn't really know the uh, like you know the depth of what that meant and if that was the only reason why I was in it and I remember when I went to university I really had an encounter with God when I went to uni that really shifted my life and that was that God was like I remember the Holy Spirit ministering to me telling me do you love me for me or do you love me for what I can do for you now how would you feel if you're in a friendship and somebody is just friends with you because of what you can do for them but not really for who you are wouldn't you be upset but that's what we do with God all the time we just go to God bless me bless me bless me give me give me give me give me Lord 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 bless me bless me give me give me but not Lord how are you Lord I want to get to know you Lord what is your what is your heart saying in this season God like I want to love you Lord I want to please you God help me to walk according to your will and help me to be in the right place Lord I I, I want to do what you want me to do what is your heart saying and that you know when the Holy Spirit ministered to me and told me that I just felt like oh my god like 
it was like at the time now don't judge me again all right at the time where i remember you know matthew mark Luke, and john the four gospels mm -hmm. i thought matthew mark luke and john were all disciples only to realize that i think luke wasn't one of the disciples and i was just like oh my life oh my life i thought all of them were definitely in the disciples some of them were not they're just the four like the four gospels that just give different accounts of jesus now don't again don't judge me go read your bible okay <laughs> but you know i really just had like a moment where i was just like oh my goodness like lord like how no but lord i love you and then god began to work on my heart and god began to minister to me and he's even been doing it this year you know ministering to me about your my motives behind certain things do you want to join that church because it's a prominent church and by you joining there it will give you a platform to display your gift or do you want to join that church because you truly believe that this is where god has placed you to be huh Huh? Oh yeah, I'm all up in your business now. Do you want to start that business because of selfish reasons or do you want to start that business because you genuinely believe that this is a gift that God has given you and you don't only want to serve others, but you know, you want to, uh, you know, you want to start a new trend of generational blessings from your family and build legacy that your children and your children's children will benefit from. What is your motive? What are your motives saying? Now, a funny one. I remember I was watching a pastor and he was saying that there was a lady, you know, they were asking, I, th I think um, the, the pastor was asking the woman like, you know, what kind of man do you want, want to marry? And the woman, said, the woman said, oh, I want to marry a pastor. And I said, why? And she said, so that when he says, and now this is my wife, she can just go and do this. He said, the way I felt like backhanding this woman that he's an African pastor, we don't play back home, okay? <laughs> and it was just like one of those where, yeah, do you want to marry a pastor? So that, you know, when he, you know, when he goes to the pulpit before he preaches and giving honor to God who's the head of my life, and I want to thank God for my wife, and then you know, you know you're looking fine, fine, you know your face is beat, beat for the God, okay? You are looking pang, piff, whatever, you know you're looking good. Is that why? So that you can just flaunt, you know, I'm the pastor's wife, but actually realizing that you really married anointing, but you didn't marry the person. Anointing looks good, doesn't it? But are you in there for anointing or are you there for the person? Are you there for the humanity of the person? So what are your motives? What are your motives? What is your heart saying? And so in this season, I really just want you to pray. And that's a prayer that I pray that like God work on my heart that you know when I get to where you want me to be, I will not place what you are blessing me with. I will not place that above you. Now another story, I was in a relationship a few years ago and uh, we broke up. Uh, and I remember, um, you know, I was in a relationship that was actually quite a serious relationship, you know, we had talks of marriage, it was that serious. And I remember, um, you know, when things were not going well, um, God was telling me to let you go and I was like, no, 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 I am going to get married. <laughs> it must happen, I will marry him, okay? I will marry him and it has to happen. And it's just one of those where God didn't allow it. God just didn't allow it. And I realized that because my parents were not married, I wanted so much in the spirit of genera breaking generational curses uh, to get married that I was willing to put my desire to get married above God's desire for me at that time. And had I gotten married, a lot of things that I'm doing now, I wouldn't have done. And don't get me wrong, he is not a bad person, I'm not a bad person, we're just not made to be with each other. And so sometimes somebody can be good for you, but they might not be God's choice for you. So there's a difference between being goodly and godly. It might be a good idea, but not a God idea. And so God really had to work on my heart and really had to teach me that, listen, your heart needs to be so intertwined with me and so in tune and so in pace with me that when the blessings come, you'll be able to handle it. You will not become proud. You not you will not become haughty and think, what happened to Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar exalted itself and that's what God had to humble him. Now, a lot of people are like, Lord, humble me, Lord, humble me. No, 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 no. When God humbles you, you don't look good. I will humble myself. The Bible said, therefore, therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that God can exalt you in due time. Trust me, you don't want God to humble you. 
I'm just saying. So, you know, I'm like, Lord, you know, I'm humbling myself. So, you know, teach me. And God began to minister to me. And God began to change my heart uh, condition. And change my heart posture. And made me realize how important my heart posture was. So, again, what is your heart saying in this season? You know, we are going towards the end of the year um 2021 and i have been very 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 blessed by the um you know heart transplant um uh series that pastor lebrian friend has been preaching from belong church that really wrecked me and really just aligned me so much to what god was doing with me what is your heart saying what have you been harboring in your heart that you need to let go? Because truth is this, if you don't deal with your heart hurt or your heart issues now, when you go to your next, it will just amplify it. And even, for example, talking from a perspective of relationship, if you don't heal fully, what will happen is this. If you don't heal fully from what's happened to you in the past that could affect your relationship in the future, you'll begin to look at the current man through the lenses of what the old one did to you. And it would not be fair for a person to pay the bill for something that he didn't do. So again, even when it comes to business opportunities, you'll be looking at it through the lenses of what's happened in the past if you've had disappointments within business. So again, what is your heart saying? What are your motives? And let God work on your heart. So assess yourself, examine yourself, and just know that during this period of process preparation, as God is preparing to take you to His promise for you, make sure that you not only you not only get there ready physically, emotionally, and spiritually, but make sure that you allow God to get your heart ready.